Right in this video tutorial, we're going to be covering how to create custom checkboxes with pure CSS. Let me show you what they look like here. So you can see we have a little bit of animation that happens. We can check these things on and off, and all of this is done without any JavaScript, just CSS. So follow along. Okay, so for this sample, we're going to have a little bit of code here set up. I'm not going to type all this out. You'll check the description if you want to grab a copy of this in its finished form to follow along. But I've just got a form tag. I've got a input type of checkbox and then a label. Notice how the label comes after the input field. And that's important to make this little trick work with CSS. So I've just got three different groups nested inside of these little paragraph tags. Each one has a label. Notice for checkbox groups, you have to have the name attribute has to be the same for each of your checkbox. Uh, elements. So I've just got a couple little things right here. So you can see this is what the checkbox looks like by default in, I think I'm in Firefox here, but let's say we want to customize these checkboxes to match some specific design. That's what we're going to start off with now. So let's move over here to our CSS. Now I've just got a little bit of boilerplate code here. This just makes the little preview a little bit easier to see in the panel here right above me. So you can kind of ignore this or you can type it in if you want but I'll scroll down a little bit so that's out of the road and we'll start with our code right here. Now, the first thing we need to do is I'm just gonna be writing general selectors here. So these selectors aren't based on classes or IDs. Instead, they are just general selectors, so they will affect the tags. And in this case, all of the elements that have the type of checkbox. Now, there's a few ways of doing this. Browser support isn't that great for actually having CSS rules where you can target specific form elements. So what we actually end up doing is we're going to completely hide the checkbox uh, input fields altogether and then redraw them using the pseudo before and after elements from scratch. Now we're just going to use the, those elements here. If you want to learn more about those elements, I've got a video that, dis, that uh, talks everything you need to know about pseudo elements, but that's the little method we're going to be using. So there's kind of two or three ways you can do this. One, you can slide the checkboxes off screen. You can set display to none. The method I'm going to be using is just setting the opacity to zero. And the reason why is then the checkboxes are still there. They're just uh, not visible. So they'll still show up in screen readers and a few things like that. So uh, that's our step one. Now the next step is I'm just gonna grab this selector again and we'll copy this down here, whoops. And for this next selector, we're going to be messing with the labels. We can't actually use a pseudo element on the input fields themselves because uh, we hid them. So we have to use the label itself and set up a before and after element on the label. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the adjacent selector, so plus label. So what this selector does is when the checkbox is in its, uh, we're gonna be, affecting the adjacent label and that's why we put those things after the input fields if we put the labels before it actually wouldn't work okay so let's go ahead and we're just going to set position to relative and this will allow us to then later on do some absolute positioning to shift around our box exactly how we want and i'm going to set padding left to 30 pixels that's going to shift those over a little bit i'm going to set my cursor to a pointer and then I'm going to set my display to inline dash block. Remember, this is affecting the labels, which are by default inline elements. And then I'll just change the color to some kind of a dark gray here. Um, whoops, we'll go with 666. And there we go. And then we're going to head it, go ahead and change the line height to 25 pixels. Now, the reason why I'm adjusting the line height is later when I move my little boxes over, you may have to play around with those values to get it to sort of center correctly for you. And that's all we're going to do right there. So the next element we're going to do is the first pseudo element. So I'm going to grab this selector here and we'll just paste that. So this one is going to be the checkbox label. We're going to say colon colon before. So we're going to use both a before and an after. The before element will be the box around the checkbox and the after element will be the actual actual check mark. Okay, so we're gonna set content to nothing because we don't have generative content. Position is gonna be absolute. 
And this will allow us to move it around just what, how we want. And again, this number is just how big or small you want your checkboxes. I'm going with width and height of 18 pixels. And here I'm gonna set my outline to two pixels solid. And then we'll just pick a color here. If I can type in the pound sign. <clears throat> and the background I'll just set to white. Back in background. Okay, there we go. So you can see the little uh, outlines there now showing up over here. And what we want to do is we want to then shift these guys over to the left. And that's why we set up absolute positioning. So we can say left zero and top zero. If you're not familiar with absolute positioning, I've got a full video on that as well. So you can read all about CSS positioning or learn about. Okay, so now our outlines are over there. That's looking pretty good. <clears throat> the next step we want to do is add in our uh, little checks. So for this one, we're going to say, I'm going to grab this little rule again here. We'll copy this one, paste it down here. And now we're going to show what the label looks like in its, the outline looks like in its checked position. So essentially, I'm just going to copy all this code, paste it in here, and you just change what's different. So I'm just going to make the color of the outline different. And I've got a specific green sort of color here that I'm going with. So I'm going to say 5FD, I'm checking out my notes here, 25F and save. So that's looking fine, but this is not going to be by default. So now I need to come in here and only apply this on the checked. So in other words, when the checkbox is in its checked state, select the next adjacent label and modify its before pseudo element. So kind of a crazy selector here. But you can see now when I click on this, that's the checked state of these checkboxes. That outline turns green. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's actually do the next one for the checkbox. So for this one, it's going to be very similar, um, but it's going to be using the after. So I'm going to copy this entire thing here and paste down here. But instead of affecting the before, I'm going to affect the after element. Now there's a couple of ways we can get an actual check mark symbol. Um, I've seen people just draw a border, a square box, but only use the bottom and left border and then rotate it 45 degrees to get the sort of check, which is clever. Uh, however, what I'm gonna do in this case, just to kind of show you, is I'm just going to apply a custom background image. It could be an SVG or a PNG or something like that. So I will do, I'm gonna leave position absolute, left top zero, all this stuff is gonna be the same. I don't need an outline on this guy. Um, instead, I need a background dash image. And I've already got a little image here um, prepared. I just called transparent check.png like so. And then I'm gonna set the background size to contain. So however, however big or small that image is, it'll just fill up its 18 by 18 pixels. And let's go ahead and save that and then make sure that's working. Oh, it's not working yet. Something's goofy here. And this rule, I forgot to delete my background color. Of course, I don't need this. This is overriding my image here, so I can delete that background. And save. And there we now have our image. So there's my little checkbox that now appears inside of those. And you can see I can click through those. And that's basically the steps. The last little thing we're going to do here is just add a little bit of an animation to this uh, checkbox. So we'll add another rule down here. And this one is going to add in some of our animation. So let's, uh, let's copy this entire thing here. And we'll paste it down here. And this one is going to be when the checkbox is not checked. So here we're going to do a colon not and then pass inside of this the checked. So this is, again, this is a really crazy selector, but this is affecting all checkboxes that are currently not checked. Whoops. Then it looks for the next adjacent label and styles the after pseudo element. Okay, so basically what we can do is we just need to change things between these two states. And the one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a transform. So on the main one here, 
I'll add in a transform and I'll set that to scale. And so when it is checked, it's going to be just set to a scale of one. All right, then I'll copy this and come down here. When it's not checked, it's going to be set to a scale of zero. The other thing I'll do is I'll set some opacity. So I'll set the opacity to one when it is checked and I'll set the opacity to zero when it's not checked. And then the last thing I need to do is actually add in the animation. So I'll just add in the transition. So we'll say transition all 0.3 seconds and we'll just add in an ease and save. So let's go ahead and check this out and see if it works now. So now when I come over here and click, so I'll uncheck all these checkboxes and you can see now they get this nice little animation where the checkbox animates up and it also has a little bit of a fade opacity animation as well. And that is pretty much it. So that's how you can create custom checkboxes using pure CSS to add a little bit of extra design to your HTML forms. So please like, subscribe, thumbs up, share the content, and we will see you in the next one.